sign number one. We name our sin as sin. And we do not, you know, before we even get to that, can I just tell you, right about, right about here is where it gets up my nose when I hear preachers call sin mistakes, regrets. Have you had a few? No, the biblical term is sin. It's missing the mark of God's law, and it is sinning against the holy God of the universe. They aren't just mere boo-boos. We name our sin as sin and do not spin it or excuse it. And further, we demonstrate godly sorrow, which is to say a grief chiefly about the sin itself against God, not just a grief about being caught or having to deal with the consequences of sin. This is a tricky one right here because emotions, they're a little hard to define, aren't they? For instance, can you really explain to somebody the difference between happy and joyful? Well, they kind of overlap a little bit, but to draw a really fine line can be a little bit tricky. Can you rightly define and explain to somebody the difference between being a little bit bummed out and being sad? or being depressed, or being grieved. A lot of these terms, they kind of mix and they, they mingle, and it's hard because, well, they're just slightly different. They've got different shades, but we better understand the difference between worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. Why? Because you see, there are two men in the Bible who had themselves worldly sorrow. Nuts! That was a mistake. I could really pay a price for this. And those two people were Esau for selling his birthright for a bowl of stew. Must have been some kind of stew. I'm thinking it didn't come from a can. And the second fellow was Judas Iscariot. They were bummed out because of the consequences. The Christian who has a right repentance, a godly sorrow, is I have sinned against you and you only have I sinned and done that which is wicked in thy sight. Because when you're genuinely repentant, you speak in King James English. That is the line between true repentance. Now, here's a tricky one for you, mom or dad. Your child, when you catch them sinning, not being naughty, because that goes right about there. When you catch them sinning, do they exercise worldly or godly sorrow. Here's a test for you. When, when you say to them something like, uh, so, you hit your sister in the head with a block of wood, did you? Uh, how do you feel like that? Sorry. That's a pretty good sign. It's probably floating right around here. We need to lead and help, not beat and prod, but explain and teach and let the Holy Spirit do the convicting work that he does to generate a godly sorrow. Here's sign number two, you're repentant. Enough. We actually confessed before we were caught or the circumstantial consequences of our sin caught up with us. You don't wait to be found out. You go, oh, I've done this awful thing. I've got to do whatever it is that is right in response to my sin which is one of the signs you're genuinely repentant enough. Not only do you want to confess it before you're busted for it, another thing you can watch out for with the kids, if they ever come to you and go, Mommy, I've done something really bad, that's a pretty good sign. If they only appear to look contrite when you catch them in the act or you catch them because you have sleuthed it out and figured out the crime that they've committed, uh-oh, it might not, might not be a godly sorrow. The contrite, repentant heart is willing to confess it before they are caught for it, and they are willing to do anything to make it right.